Chapter 2, E.T. Souls and the New Age As you probably know, there's been a lot more human E.T. contact behind the scenes than most people realize. In my view, one of the most important elements of this drama is the claim that extraterrestrial or E.T. souls have taken birth among us for tens of thousands of years. Using the terms walk-ins and star people, the existence of this group was first brought to wide public attention by the books of Brad Steiger and Ruth Montgomery. However, this phenomenon, no matter how strange it seems, is just part of a greater cosmic plan. From this angle, interdimensional soul transfers to Earth are just the vanguard of a more spectacular and rare event, no less than planetary initiation. It's for this reason, and to witness such an event, that our galactic family has now come to call. The desire to aid this world process is the main reason why wanderers and E.T. walk-ins are here. A prediction is made in some New Age circles that after the transition to fourth density, a condition of higher energy and consciousness that had been predicted to occur around 2010-2013 AD by some sources, human society will be transformed into a culture of kindness and compassion. Many people are predicting that Earth will soon be accepted into a benevolent confederation of planets, a galactic union of various worlds. It's said that many more ETs will then come to live among us, fully conscious of their identity and still holding their higher dimensional powers. Working side by side with humanity, they will build, teach, and offer their technologies for reconstruction. Other channel sources state that our planetary mother, the long-suffering Gaia, will soon be liberated from her role as a schoolhouse for destructive, immature souls. In the main, I agree with all of these ideas, in some ways. Clearly, wonderful things are expected. Despite the panic and pain of abduction experience, the tangled threads of conspiracy, endless cover-ups, and the debunker's shrill cry, the basic tone of UFO ET matters is really one of optimism. To broaden our understanding, we must consider the ultimate purpose of benevolent ET groups and those who've chosen to take human form, the walk-ins and wanderers. In esoteric terms, what's really happening is the birth of a new planet. Yet, how can we believe this is so? Seeing such glaring social ills around us, the cultural decay of nations, and the arrogant hubris and deceit of geopolitics. From a worldly perspective, things look pretty bad indeed, and to my eyes, they're actually getting worse. However, I consider this just the death of the old king, the surfacing at last of the many evils of confused humanity, and ultimately, the final futile power grab of a self-serving elite. Could it be that the galactic energies now streaming into Earth's energy grid actually amplify the power of both polarities, amping up both kindness and self-centered aggression? Could it be that within this charged climate, Humanity's deep-seated corruption is fast rising to the surface like a breaking fever, a kind of collective healing crisis. As it is always darkest before dawn, I believe Earth's long-suffering nightmare is coming to a close, and among the wanderers and lightworkers that I know, the consensus is that it's not a moment too soon. Many of us, and perhaps you too, are eager for the new dawn. In the midst of this planetary birth, with labor pains, nausea, and social cramping, there's definitely a need for some kind of stability. Many ET channeled sources agree that intensified heart center energy is now streaming into Earth and must be integrated into the changing grid of the planet itself. However, this process is hindered and distorted by the accumulated force from centuries of human disharmony, both individual and collective. The planet itself is weakened, and requires a resonant core of awakened, love-infused beings to anchor the cosmic energies coming in. This radiant group, the true world servers, actually circulate, channel, and harmonize the absorption of such light energies. It sounds esoteric, and it really is. And so we arrive at the role of wanderers, to receive, amplify, and transmit the cosmic heart energies of love to balance and assist world initiation. It doesn't matter if such star people or starborn teach, organize, go public, or even recognize their own ET identity, because their very presence, to the extent they're living from the heart, offers a crystallized force that actively supports global transformation. 
Of course, this is not to say that those who are not, or who think they are not ET souls, are themselves not helping Earth. Service to others is rendered by love, ET or otherwise. These are subtle matters, but I think they need to be explored for two reasons. First, to provide a larger window through which we can see the meaning of the present time. And secondly, to support those of us who actually are from elsewhere. Extraterrestrial souls really do come to help the planet, and our work doesn't really depend on the extent of public acceptance. The planet itself can use the harmonized energies that stream from awakened and balanced ET souls, as well as from all of those who live in love. Like an elementary school that's about to become a high school, I believe that very soon this earth will no longer house destructive young souls who don't appreciate loving kindness. They'll simply need to go elsewhere. For the past 75,000 years, beginning in the long-lost civilizations of Atlantis and Lemuria, this planet has been a schoolhouse for souls who've not yet learned to love. In the future, in what is considered fourth density, it will become a school for those who are already based in love and are in the process of developing wisdom. This spiritual winnowing process is the true meaning of the Christian terms of rapture, apocalypse, judgment day, and the kingdom of heaven. The meek, or those who are loving, kind, gentle, and generous, will indeed inherit the earth. As living souls evolve freely throughout an infinite cosmos, there are countless places to go for souls who keep their hearts shut and deny inner love. It's the task of those from elsewhere, the wanderers and walk-ins, to simply provide an energy boost for earth in its time of need, and to unconditionally support those who come our way and call for help. We are simply here as catalyst. And remember, nothing is carved in stone. If we are committed to spiritual growth, our work begins with clearing the personal haze of thinking and feeling, and continues on to further service that can radiate a clear light of love, wisdom, and unity. If you want to help, you will make a difference by giving whatever you can, when you can, being sensitive to those around you, and living an open life with kindness and intelligent goodwill. ET souls on Earth, not special or grandiose, are simply here to support humanity's growth into a more conscious race. In the next chapter, we'll look at the stories of three people who came to realize their own cosmic roots and how they have gone on from there.